Okay, in this video, we're going to show you how to properly remove a distributor a rotor, the rotor cap. These here are your spark plug wires. One thing that I would recommend before you get to this point, um, when the spark plug wires are plugged in and the spark plugs are in the engine, I would recommend that you tag one, two, three, four, five, six. For those of you, when you are taking it off, that way you know that when you have all these wires loose like this, you know that six is gonna plug in over here, five, four, three, two, one, just to alleviate any confusion on your part. But uh, anyway, Tyler's here, he's, uh, he's taking this stuff out and I'll let him kind of go more in depth. So, We've got a couple issues with this distributor here. Um, one of them, uh, so to take the cap off, it's just two screws, two Phillips head screws on each side. Um, pull the cap off of this guy, take a look inside here. Um, the rotor, this is the rotor. Rotor just slides right off. Um, if yours does not, there is a problem. And if you look at the end of this guy, you can actually see how damaged that is. There's lots of corrosion, um, lots of pitting on that. Um, mainly from the electrical conductivity that's going on in there so this is actually arcing across to the points inside the cap which is inside of this guy right here so this guy spins inside of here and as it goes around it touches each one of those points um, which are called the the point contacts um, and that's what allows it to spark over and you can actually tell there's quite a bit of corrosion inside on all of these so we're gonna go ahead and replace this one the other thing that we've got going on here um, that we're actually gonna have to replace the distributor for is that the shaft itself is actually wobbling back and forth so you can actually see how the shaft itself is actually worn out so there's a bushing That's a bad in... distributor there my friends yep yep so inside here this is our this is our reluctor wheel this is where this is our cam um, position sensor right here so as this window spins inside of here um there's an opening and a closing so this is this this guy right here tells the computer based off of where it's at visually on this ring right here tells the computer where the camshaft is at so that guy's gonna have to get replaced as well um but if you look you see how how much actual play we have in this guy i mean that guy's trashed so we're gonna have to get a new one of those um pull the distributor out it's a matter of pulling this bolt out right here this is our adjustment bolt and it also holds the distributor in place it is a it is a fork style so that just goes around to the distributor and allows the distributor to turn inside of it. Uh, we just pull this bolt, uh, get that guy out of there, and then the distributor slides out. Um, as you pull the distributor out, you're actually going to notice it's going to turn. Um, if you're just replacing the distributor, I would suggest marking the distributor in two places, both at the low point where you start and then at the high point where it, where it stops. So it, as you get to a certain point, it's only gonna go so far, but the distributor is gonna keep coming out. Um, I would mark both of those spots so that as you put it back together, it, it allows you, it shows you where it's at. Um, the next thing that you're gonna have a little bit of an issue with with that um, is if you notice this whole outer piece um, actually moves, that's how we do our timing. So without a timing light, um, you are gonna have to you are gonna have to time this when you're done, uh, and you're gonna have to use a timing light to get it in there. Uh, some of the newer Jeeps, some of the uh, some of the newer 4.0s, I believe 2003 might even be 2002. Um, they got rid of the distributor and just went to distributorless ignition. So there's two coil packs down here, and they deliver everything out to what we need. So got rid of the got rid of this design. But I want to go ahead and pull that out and just yep. kind of show them the whole assembly once they so, get that out. So this is the entire thing right here. This is what comes out. This is where it engages into your, uh, into the lower, uh, I'm sorry, into your pump. So this actually drives your oil pump right here off of the bottom. This engages into your uh, camshaft. This is the camshaft gear. And then there's a bushing in the bottom here and there's a bushing in the top here. Um, that bushing <laughs> is completely trashed. So is that good or bad, Tyler? That is bad. And the reason why that's bad is because if you notice that these are helically cut gears, if these were straight cut gears, the movement up and down wouldn't matter. But since they're helically cut gears, every every little bit that this moves up and down, we're actually changing the timing um, as this is driving. So um, yeah, that's really, really bad. We don't want to have any, we don't want to have any end play in it. And we don't want to have any shaft play. Should we so, replace that? Yes, that's going to get replaced. Okay. So we'll show you a video of the brand new one when we do put that in. Um, and you will see the proper way to install it. And, uh, hopefully we'll be able to put the timing together for you and show you how to do the, 
Correct. steps that it takes to get this properly we done. will we will show you once we get the front timing cover and stuff off of it get all the timing chain replaced we'll show you how to get it timed up on the camshaft timing and then as well as on the distributor timing as well and then we'll also show you a startup pr a procedure uh procedure so that we can get um a good startup on it um and run the engine in um get the rings broken and everything when we get it started so yep really good explanation and description of that uh, tyler would you like to say anything to the guys Hello internet, how are you? Here is our new distributor. This is a crown distributor, probably one of the higher end ones that you can purchase. Um, already comes with the cap and the rotor, so you don't have to worry about any of that. I just am keeping it in its plastic until we install it. Uh, but again, here is the part number for you guys. That is a Crown 56041034. I paid just a little over $180 for this. So if you guys have any questions, please comment in the comments and I'm more than happy to help out. You will uh, see the install and we will go through the importance of the distributor. Okay, in this video, we are going to show you how to properly install a new distributor we have some old distributor cap uh, wires here on the cap we're going to replace these with live wires and uh when we replace those we'll go a little bit more in detail on the live wires but uh as far as that goes uh we'll let tyler so, take over so what we're looking at here is we actually had a small discrepancy um, when we were starting this guy after putting the motor together because of how everything kind of lined up so what we're going to go over here is exactly how this how exactly how this distributor lines up in the orientation that it is so that you don't have the same issue okay so right here this plug wire right here is plug number one um that's where anytime you start off your timing or anytime you put a distributor in or time a distributor or time a vehicle it's always based off of your number one cylinder you can do it off of the other ones but it's just going to make your life that much harder so what we try to do is we try to do off of number one um, on the front of the crankshaft pulley, there is a timing mark um, that we've actually lined up with the zero mark on the, the timing cover. So there's actually timing marks on this. Uh, with this particular vehicle and model year of this vehicle, it does have a distributor, but this distributor um, is non-adjustable. So we don't have the ability to adjust timing with this distributor because the timing is done through the actual computer itself. So we don't have the ability to adjust base timing. So the distributor can only go in one, um, one way. But in the process of doing that, what we found is um, the rotor doesn't actually point to, to the number one spark plug wire. Um, at the moment, I'm, I'm struggling with understanding exactly how this is operating but it, it points to right between them. There's a mark down on the distributor that's pointing at right now at top dead center. And if we put this cap back on, that's actually pointing to right in between um, number one and number five. This is number one, this is number five. Um, so it's pointing right between them. So the computer's obviously doing something with this distributor to control how this is timed based off of that. Um, what I did was I actually, when I installed the distributor, I wanted it to line up with number one. So I actually put it one tooth off. We had a small issue with, a, with it starting. It wanted to, but it didn't quite stay. Now keep so, in mind, this is the new distributor. This isn't the old distributor. This it, is the new one that we are referring to. Here. Very correct, very correct. So this is the new distributor. We did put a brand new one in it. Um, the old one was still in okay shape, but I mean, if we're gonna go through all this, an extra, you know, so maybe and me, I bad. wanna put a brand new one in. Correct. So. Um, um, and it does come pinned, pre-pinned from the factory, so the rotor won't spin any different from the distributor itself until it gets put in. Um, and how you can tell if it's put in correctly is if the bolt lines up with the little notch on the side of it. Um, uh, and you can easily tell if it's not in there, you, the, the bolt's not going in. There's a little keeper that does have to go back on, even though the distributor has a little notch where the, the bolt goes down on it, there is a little keeper down there that has to go back in around the outside edge of the distributor. Um, and it's a little bit hard to see all the way down there in the bottom. When we took the distributor off, I think you can see the cap that we're talking about um, on the old distributor. It's the exact same one for this new one. Correct, correct. Um, so keep in mind the number one key aspect of what we're trying to teach you here is that for whatever reason on this particular vehicle, um, the the rotor at top dead center doesn't line directly up with the with the number one spark plug wire on the 
on the top of the cap. It's right between the number one and the number five. So when you're going to put this together um, and you watch this video because you're in the exact same boat we were, um, line it up with the line on the distributor and it will go, the, it will start and it will run the way that you want it to. Oh yeah. Old distributor, this is Gramps right here. <laughs> new distributor, this is Tyler. Tyler, old would you like to say anything? School, Hello, school. Internet. This is halfway between old school and new school. So on this new distributor, you have the two bolts. So one is there, and then the other one over there. That hold the cap on. There's just two, um, eight millimeter or a Phillips head. Uh, if you plan on pulling it in and out numerous times, the Phillips is helpful, but you can potentially strip it out. Um, do not over tighten the distributor cap. You do not need to like pounce on this guy, this guy putting, you know, all kinds of force into it. It is plastic. It will break um, a little bit. We'll hold it in place. So you don't have to worry about it. And now we're going to go ahead and replace these wires. Now, these were my old wires and these are red, but uh, I wanted to replace them with the live wires. You can pick the live wires up online. They are anywhere from $125 to $150. They are a little bit more expensive. Too. Now, these live wires are each numbered one through six, as you see there. Earlier in my video, I told you guys to make sure that you mark your wires so you know which place to put them back into. But if you are replacing your wires with these ones here, that is the nice thing about these, that they are already marked. So a uh, heavy duty gauge on these here. These are rated up to 1400 degrees. Uh, they have the shrink wrap already on the ends there. Just a... a big upgrade for the spark plug wires so any questions you can get these online these are anywhere from 125 to 150 dollars here so what we have here is we have dielectric grease um this is literally silicone this is just straight 100 percent um silicone in uh, non-drying form. So most silicone, when you put it on something, you know, it's going to dry, it's going to seal, it's going to do what it needs to do. Dielectric grease is different. It always stays as a grease, but it's silicon based. So um, what we're going to do here is we want to have it on, on both ends. So we're just going to put a spot inside of both of these. And then when we push it on, it's going to push uh, down onto both the spark plug and onto the top of the cap. Um, and if we do it at the very end of it like this, um, when we go to push it on, it's going to squish it around in there and get it everywhere that we want it to be. So we want to get this guy stuck down all the way onto here. We'll get him pushed down onto that. And the awesome part is this says number three. So we know that we are going to be on number three. And that just happens to be the one that I did first. Um, you can start at number one. You can start at number two. You can start wherever you would like. Number three is happens to be where we start. We have installed the live wires. Here is the complete install on each one of these. Now there's, there is one complaint that I have here is how long they are. And you guys will see they, they are pretty long, but for the most part, um, there isn't any problems with that. You just gotta just kind of route it the right way and you should, you should be fine. So we're going to go ahead and start it up and, uh, see how this purrs. So let's go ahead and start it up. Here we go. There we are. There we have it. Brand new live wires. Brand new distributor. We are set. She fired up. We did something right. Appreciate you guys watching this video. Hope you guys learned something from it. If you guys have any questions or comments, please, uh, please put them in the comment section. Uh, make sure to subscribe and let us know what you think. We appreciate it.